We are following breaking news in the election interference case facing the disgrace, twice impeached, thrice indicted ex-president. Moments before we came on air, Judge Tanya Chutkin issuing a protective order in that case. By now, the Trump team's legal playbook is no secret. Invoke the First Amendment, delay, 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 and try the case in the media. It is their calling card. But today, Trump's legal shenanigans may have met their match in the form of Judge Tanya Chutkin, who signaled she was having none of it. Today was the first hearing before Judge Chutkin in the 2020 election interference case against Donald Trump. A kind of preview of how she'll run her court in this case. And in deciding whether to grant special counsel Jack Smith's request for a protective order limiting what the disgraced ex-president can and cannot say publicly about the case, Judge Chutkin appeared to cut through many of Trump's typical talking points like a hot knife through butter. On those First Amendment protections the Trump team is so fond of citing, Judge Chutkin said this, quote, Mr. Trump, like every American, has a First Amendment right to free speech, but that right is not absolute, adding that without a protective order, the disclosure of discovery materials could lead to witnesses being harassed or otherwise interfering with a fair trial. What about the fact that Trump is running for president? Judge Chutkin did not mince words on that either, saying, quote, this is a criminal trial. I cannot and I will not factor into my decisions the effect it's going to have on a political campaign for either side. Quote, I intend to ensure that your client is afforded all the rights he's entitled to. The existence of a political campaign is not going to have any bearing on my decision. I intend to keep politics out of this. And on Trump's habit of using Truth Social to test drive potential defenses, Judge Chutkin had this to say, quote, your client's defense is supposed to happen in this courtroom, not on the Internet. And to the extent your client wants to make statements on the Internet, they always have to yield to witness security and witness safety. Adding, quote, I could see the possibility for a lot of problems here. Indeed. Now, we should point out Judge Chutkin did not grant the sweeping protective order special counsel Jack Smith had asked for. Both sides got some of what they were seeking, but make no mistake. In her words and in her demeanor on the bench today, Judge Chutkin put Trump and his legal team on notice that she did not come to play. Just moments ago, Judge Chutkin issued that protective order. We've assembled an expert team to break it all down, but I want to read one section that seems aimed squarely at reining in Donald Trump. Quote, defense counsel may show or provide sensitive materials to the defendant as necessary to assist in preparation of the defense and defense counsel is not required to be present while the defendant reviews sensitive materials. However, if defense counsel does show or provide sensitive materials to the defendant, defense counsel may not allow the defendant to write down any personally identifying information that is contained in the sensitive materials. If the defendant takes notes regarding sensitive materials, defense counsel must inspect those notes to ensure that the defendant has not copied down personally identifying information. Moreover, during any time that the defendant reviews sensitive materials outside of defense counsel's presence, the defendant must not have access to any device capable of photocopying, recording, or otherwise replicating the sensitive materials, including a smart cellular device. And that is where we start this hour. Let's bring in MSNBC legal analyst Lisa Rubin, who is inside the courthouse for us today. Also joining us, former Deputy Assistant Attorney General and former U.S. Attorney Harry Littman and national investigative reporter for The Washington Post, Carol Lenning, is here. Harry, shortly before we came on air, yeah, Judge Chutkin issuing her protective order. I believe you've had a chance to look through it. What jumps out to you? The, the extreme solicitude for witnesses. She's making very clear that he can't be in any way intimidating or even demeaning them. And she put everything that has to do with witnesses in the compartment of sensitive information, not just grand jury witnesses, anyone that the government has interviewed. That's the first thing. And that the second thing is, even as she gave a, a nugget to the Trump defense team of not defining everything as sensitive materials. She took it away by making clear that anything the government was concerned about in terms of both in, uh, impairing the jury pool and also going after witnesses would violate the order anyway. So I think, as you say, Alicia, she has put them on notice and given a verdict that is, I would say, 60-40 for the government. Lisa, at one point, Judge Chutkin seemed to nod to the classified documents case, saying, quote, he, 
Trump has a habit of taking documents he shouldn't take. Walk us through some of the conditions of this protective order and the rules around who can see the documents from Trump's team and where and when. So the people who can see documents that are marked as sensitive, Alicia, are people who are employed by Trump's team. And that was a point of contention today because John Loro, who's one of President Trump's lawyers, essentially said, we are the David in this fight. And the Department of Justice and the special counsel's office with 60 lawyers at their disposal, they are the Goliaths. And we are going to need volunteer lawyers, people that we don't pay to get through all of that discovery. That didn't go anywhere with Judge Shutkin. She said, you know, by your definition, Mr. Loro, people who are unindicted co-conspirators in this case could look at sensitive materials. So Judge Shutkin was really putting the screws to the Trump team today. And I would go further than Harry. I would say it's more than 60-40 for the government because of one of the things he just said. All of the things the government cared about is already defined as sensitive materials. And Tom Windham, one of the government's lawyers, stood up today, today and said the vast majority of materials that will be produced to President Trump, those are sensitive materials as well, Alicia. Lisa, I want to ask you about what sounded like a stark rebuke from Judge Chutkin at the very end. Quote, I caution you and your client to take special yeah. care in your public statements about this case. I will take whatever measures are necessary to safeguard the integrity of these proceedings. Even arguably ambiguous statements from parties or their counsel, if they can be reasonably interpreted to intimidate witnesses or to prejudice potential jurors, can threaten the process. The more a party makes inflammatory statements about this case, which could taint the jury pool, the greater the urgency will be that we proceed to trial quickly. Lisa, she knows who she is dealing with here. She does. She absolutely knows who she's dealing with. And she's also, Alicia, drawing a distinction between the protective order, which governs the use of discovery or evidence in the case, and the obligations that are incumbent on Trump and his lawyers not to intimidate witnesses or tamper with the jury pool, irrespective of whether those threats actually concern evidence or not. She's essentially saying to them, your client has obligations under his conditions of a release. He's a free person right now because of those conditions. And if he intimidates witnesses, tampers with the jury pool, shares evidence with people who might still be under investigation or does anything else to threaten the fair administration of justice in my watch, that's not going to fly with me. All right, I want to underline a part of this. If they can be reasonably interpreted to intimidate witnesses, under those contours, does Trump's post about, if you come after me, I'll come after you, does that fly? Was that to me? Yes, Harry. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, I think I think it falls uh, totally flat. Look, um, I, I I agree with basically everything uh, Lisa is saying. And one more point: he she treated Trump like a truant child. It, the, the the most sort of galling thing of all. Obviously, he starts at a level of mistrust. So he starts with a record, as it were. Now there will be exactly this debate. The reason it's it, uh, there's something for him is not just what he got, but there will be a next level where they argue about uh, terms, and then she imposes something more strict, and then at the end of the day, the big hammer she has, of course, but she doesn't want to deploy it early or at all, if she can help it, is putting him in jail. But they know that at the end of the day, it's her courtroom, it's her witnesses to worry about, it's the her process to take account of, and she will, I think she showed today, be unafraid if he, if he pushes her to the wall of responding with the most severe sanctions.